How you been? I missed you. Today's Monday, so you guys already know what that means. It's mock draft, but this is a special mock draft because it is the 10th edition of my mock draft. It is also the second to last one that I'm going to be doing before the actual draft. So as we get closer to the draft, hopefully these get more and more accurate. Um, I spent a lot of time on this mock draft. This is my baby. I had to make it special. Number 10. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of trades in this mock draft. There are some teams picking players that I hadn't had them picking previously. Um, so, you know, hopefully it's good, you know, or else I'm going to probably cry and be super sad for the rest of the week. Um, but before we get into this, obviously, please subscribe for my own sanity. I am going to go insane if I don't hit 100 subscribers before the draft. So if you don't want to see me um, admitted into Arkham Asylum, please make sure to subscribe to the video. Love you guys. All right. Let's start with the mock draft. <clears throat> First overall, um, it's Carolina Panthers. And I've, I've been seeing some people say that they're going to trade down. But I think that does, I don't think that makes a lot of sense because if you're the Panthers and you trade up for the first overall pick, one of the only teams to do that in the history of the league, if you trade up for the first round pick, you have to have a guy in mind that you really, 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 really love um, in order to give away all those assets to the Bears. Now, if you trade up from one and then trade back down, to me, that's just counterproductive. So if you're going to go all in, if you're going to push all your chips on the table for one guy, it's got to be the guy that you like. And I think for the Panthers, that guy is Bryce Young, and I think he is going to be the first overall pick in this draft. Um, I think he, I have him as the best quarterback, and if you're taking the best quarterback in the draft, that's pretty much always a good thing. Um, number two, we have Houston. Now, this complicates things for Houston because there are reports coming out that say that um, they like Bryce Young a lot more than they like C.J. Stroud. So if Bryce Young goes one to the Panthers, um, they are not going to go quarterback, which is what a lot of us had previously thought. So... That leaves pretty much two options. A, you take the best player on your board, or B, do you trade down? And I think, you know, again, I mentioned this in the last video with um, the mock draft, where you're talking about a guy in D'Amico Ryans who came from the 49ers. Not only was he the defensive coordinator, but he got to witness firsthand how much Nick Bosa at pick number two or pick number three, whichever one he was, I think he was pick two, changed that 49ers team. Not just the defense, he changed the whole team, right? Um, so if they feel that they can get their hands on their version of Nick Bosa, I think that they will take that opportunity. And, you know, me personally, I have Will Anderson as the best edge rusher in this draft class, but there are a lot of people saying that the Texans really love Tyree Wilson. They think he's over Will Anderson. Um, he's got obviously that local bias. They're probably able to scout him a little bit better. They're right in their backyard. So I can see Tyree Wilson being the second overall pick in the NFL draft. I mentioned in previous videos that the draft doesn't get exciting until number three. Well, if the Panthers take Bryce Young at one, I think it does get exciting at two, and the Texans have some options there. Now for our first trade in the um, in the mock draft. Um, with C.J. Stroud slipping, I think a team is going to come up and trade with the Cardinals at three to take him. I think there's a lot of things I like to see with C.J. Stroud, his accuracy, his ball placement, everything like that. And I think a team like the Raiders, who have a, currently a veteran in place in Jimmy Garoppolo, they can get out of that in a year. Um, and I think that Josh McDaniels love his, loves his accurate quarterbacks. They want a guy that can distribute the ball to their paid receivers like Devontae Adams and Jacoby Myers recently, and even Hunter Renfro. I think they gave an extension not too long ago. Um, they want a guy like C.J. Stroud. So they're going to trade up with the Arizona Cardinals. So the Cardinals are going to fall back to pick number seven, and the Las Vegas Raiders are going to take C.J. Stroud third overall. Next, um, the Indianapolis Colts, having their eyes on probably one or two of these quarterbacks at least, um, are going to love the scenario that has unfolded with Houston passing up on a quarterback. They are going to take one of their guys in Anthony Richardson. They love his upside, and they think that head coach Shane Steichen can mold Anthony Richardson and get the most out of him like he did with J with uh, Justin Herbert and Jalen Hurts, you know, two of the best young quarterbacks in today's game. They like Anthony Richardson there. Then at Seattle at number five, and honestly, as a Seahawks fan, this is a dream scenario um, where Will Anderson falls to the fifth pick. Will Anderson goes there, um, and the Seahawks get an edge rusher at a big position of need. Next, number six, the Detroit Lions. They love Devon Witherspoon. Um, I don't think that that's even a secret anymore. They they love the guy. And, you know, with them trading away Jeff Okuda, at bare minimum, they need more depth at the position. Um, I think he fits Dan Campbell's physicality style. Um, he likes the way that he plays. So I like Devon Witherspoon going six to Detroit. Now at number seven, we have the Arizona Cardinals, who are going to be taking a guy that's fallen a little bit in the draft in Jalen Carter. 
Now, if you're the Cardinals, um, Jalen Carter might have been the pick at three regardless. But if you can assure yourself some more additional assets, and I'm not sure exactly what the trade would be, but it would it would be some it would be some more stuff to you know move down four spots and take the guy that you might have already just taken there. Um, I think that's a great move, especially for a young rebuilding team. So Jalen Carter, again, one of the most dominant players in the entire draft, talent wise, he's probably the first or the second best player. But you do worry about those character, you do worry about that off the field stuff. So if the Cardinals are willing to gamble. They can get a really good player at number seven. Number eight um, is the Atlanta Falcons, but a team in the Tennessee Titans is going to trade up. I feel like in this portion of the draft, there'll be a frenzy because Will Levis has fallen. So the Tennessee Titans are going to trade up. They're going to take Will Levis because they really don't have a plan at quarterback right now. Um, Tannehill is, you know, not the guy going forward. And I don't think they were impressed with what they saw in Malik Willis. So they're going to trade up to go get Will Levis. Um, and number nine, the Chicago Bears, obviously having already traded from the Panthers from one, they need offensive tackle. And I think that um, if none of the dominant defensive players are left, like Jalen Carter or Tyree Wilson or Will Anderson, um, then they're going to go with an offensive tackle. And I think they're going to go with Paris Johnson. Now, some people have projected Darnell Wright to go to the Bears at nine, and I wouldn't be necessarily upset with that, but I do think that Paris Johnson fits their um, style a little bit more. Uh, Darnell Wright is I think pretty much exclusively a pass protector. Um, he kind of struggles with run blocking. And I think Paris Johnson could fit more into that Bears run heavy uh, scheme that they're going to run with that, all those zone runs and everything like that. Number 10, the Philadelphia Eagles. Listen, I don't know what the fuss is about the Eagles taking B. John Robinson at 10. I think that could break the league. Um, you basically have a freebie top 10 pick thanks to the Saints. And if you take B. John Robinson, not only does it replace Miles Sanders, who left in free agency, but you will have one of the most dominant rushing attacks ever with Jalen Hurts and Bijan Robinson. Additionally, you know, you also have two really good receivers, a really good tight end, a great offensive line, a really good defense. There is no reason, barring massive injuries across the board, there is no reason that the Philadelphia Eagles should not be a legitimate Super Bowl contender with Bijan Robinson um, on in their backfield. So I think if you're the Eagles, you got to go Bijan Robinson there. Um, number 11, now belonging to the Atlanta Falcons due to the Titans trade. They're going to go edge rusher, and I think that they're going to go Lucas Van Ness. Now, I personally am not a big fan of Lucas Van Ness, but a lot of mock drafts and a lot of scouts have him going really high. So I kind of have to um, just swallow my pride and agree with them. Not the only thing I'll be swallowing this week. Anyway, number 12, um, we have the Houston Texans, who I do think will go with wide receiver. The first receiver off the board here will definitely be Jackson Smith and Jigba out of Ohio State. Pairing that with um, their other first-round selection of Tyree Wilson, and then you can start to form a really nice core in Houston. Now, some people are saying, oh, well, what about quarterback, da-da-da-da-da? I think that they can wait a year because the quarterback draft next year with Drake May and Caleb Williams is going to be legit. And if they're not very good again with for a year, you know, one year wasted of Tyree Wilson and Jack Smith and Jigba isn't nothing crazy. They have five years of control with them. Um, then go get yourself a, a quarterback. I think that could be really, really good. Number 13, um, the New York Jets, who are probably, maybe, we think, going to get Aaron Rodgers, um, and they'd like to protect him. You know, Mekhi Becton has, I think, um, suffered a lot of injuries in his young career, and I really do hope that he bounces back and plays a full season, but unfortunately, that's not a guarantee. Additionally, you know, Dwayne Brown was a left tackle last year, and he's old as fuck, so um, you really can't hurt yourself by going offensive tackle here, especially a guy in Peter Skaronsky that, you know, is versatile enough to play inside a guard, play left tackle, right tackle. You can kind of move him all over. Um, you really can never have enough quality linemen on your team, so I have Peter Skaronsky going 13 to the Jets. Number 14, I have the New England Patriots taking Zay Flowers. Um, they really like him from what I've been seeing. You know, I think they need a receiver. Juju is more of a, um, he's more of an X, I think, at this point in his career. Um, although he did play a lot in the slot in Kansas City. I think he's losing a step or two. And I think Zay Flowers can be that home run hitter that, honestly, the Patriots have not had for a while. So um, I think Zay Flowers could um, be good. Additionally, you know, with Bill O'Brien now becoming the offensive coordinator, they finally have an offensive coordinator where they can scheme players open. Um, Zay Flowers is a guy who Bill O'Brien would love to get his hands on. Um, did a lot at Alabama with, you know, a guy like Jamison Williams and everything like that. So I think that it would be a nice toy for Bill O'Brien to play with. Number 15, I have the Green Bay Packers um, taking Dalton Kincaid, the tight end from Utah. Um, I think that... <clears throat> You know, with um, Robert Tanyan leaving and Mercedes Lewis leaving, I think they have a big hole at tight end. Additionally, um, I think that they want to give Jordan Look, 
Jordan look, Jordan Love as many options as possible to throw the ball to to get a good evaluation of him because that's kind of the problem the Bears have right now where it's like, yeah, we think Justin Fields is good, but he doesn't have an offensive line and we don't really have receivers, um, so we can't really tell. Give him a competent receiving core and see what happens with Jordan Love. And that's what I'm going to say. I think Dalton Kincaid is either the first or the second best tight end in the entire draft, and I think that Green Bay would love to have him. Um, next, number 16, Washington. I think they're going to go with Joey Porter Jr., who's my favorite cornerback in the entire class, um, or my second favorite, excuse me, behind Witherspoon. I think he's awesome. Again, I think Ron Rivera really likes to go corner, um, bolster up that defense a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised if they went with like an offensive tackle or anything like that, but um, I, I can definitely see corner, especially I think it's good value at 16 for Joey Porter Jr. Speaking of offensive tackle, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers taking Darnell Wright out of Tennessee. Um, Kenny Pickett showed really good flashes last year that he could be the guy potentially. So for the Steelers, you have to do everything you can to protect him. And I think Darnell Wright, like I said earlier in the video, is one of the best pass protectors in this entire class. I mean, go watch his film against Will Levis. You will be very impressed. So especially, you know, in a division that is super contested. Um, and it's a really good division with a lot of high paid quarterbacks. Um, you want yours to be standing upright. Next, we have the Detroit Lions. I think they're going to go with Kalia Kansi, um, the defensive tackle from Pittsburgh. I think their interior of their defensive line needs a little work. Um, I think the edges, you know, with Ian Hutchinson and, and those guys are, are good. But I think if you just want to fill up the gap a little bit, get some more interior pressure. I think he's a really good pass rusher. Um, might not be on the field, you know, all three downs, but I think that he's a guy on third down that you do not want to have to block, um, especially in a third and long situation. Number 19, Tampa Bay. I think Brian Brisset is probably the move here. Um, like I said, rebuilding their defensive line. Um, pair him at the time with Vita Vea, and I think you have a good good little D-line cooking right there, and then you just rebuild your team in other ways. Um, number 20, I actually have another trade. I have the Seattle Seahawks trading down, um, which is a staple of the John Schneider era, for those of you who have been paying attention. And then a team that is known for trading up in the Dallas Cowboys. Um, I have the Dallas Cowboys trading up to get Quentin Johnston, the receiver from TCU, Listen, Jerry Jones loves some good athletes, and he loves big-name guys who could be superstars. Um, pairing Dak with another receiver opposite of CeeDee Lamb, I think, is a big priority in this offseason. And you saw that with Brandon Cooks coming to Dallas for that fifth-round pick. But Brandon Cooks is older, and I don't know if this is a long-term fix at receiver. I think it's more of a band-aid. So let Quentin Johnston come into this offense. Let him develop and let him refine his craft a little bit, not needing to play as much with Brandon Cooks there initially, and then he can take over full-time duties probably year two, year three. Um, I think this is a very Cowboys move, not to mention, you know, also the guy from Texas. So, you know, he's used to, you know, uh, big-time football in that state. Uh, I think Quentin Johnston makes a lot of sense for the Cowboys there at number 20. Next, 21, the Los Angeles Chargers. I have them taking Jalen Hyatt, uh, 21st overall. Listen, you want speed, that's Jalen Hyatt's game. And I think the Chargers desperately are lacking at speed at the receiver position. Um, they need guys that can stretch the field vertically. They need guys that Justin Herbert can just uncork a bomb to. Um, and I think Jalen Hyatt um, would be good. I think it would also solve another one of their problems with, you know, team or not being able to run the football. I think that teams would be more... Um, hesitant to play um, heavier, to, to give the Chargers heavier boxes. And I think that um, they would also play more off-man coverage on Jalen Hyatt, having to respect his speed. So that would open up the run game. That would open up the quick game a little bit. Um, and some people say, you know, the quick game is an extension of your run game. So I think Jalen Hyatt would fix not only the actual problem um, of the, uh, you know, speedy receiver for the Chargers, but I think he also helps to fix some of their other problems as well. Number 22, I have the Ravens taking Miles Murphy, the edge rusher from Clemson. Um, listen, you know, I had them taking a receiver in many of my mock drafts before they signed Odell, but they are committing a lot of money to that receiver position now um, with Odell. So I think they need edge rusher due to, you know, Calais Campbell leaving. Um, I've also talked to my friend Makana, who is from TTB Ravens. You guys know Makana. Um who says the Ravens could take a corner, which I don't disagree with. I wouldn't be shocked if, like, Deontay Banks or Cam Smith or even Emmanuel Mosby, even Emmanuel Mosby goes right here. Um, but I just think, you know, Miles Murphy's probably higher on their board, I would guess. Um, I would go edge rusher here. Speaking of corners, though, Minnesota is definitely taking a corner. I would be pretty shocked if they didn't. Um, and they're going to go with Deontay Banks, uh, the corner, uh, you know, filling in the need of Patrick Peterson leaving. Um, obviously, they got Brian Murphy, but their secondary was pretty bad last year. So they need an infusion of talent, and they need guys that can go in and make plays. Um, and hopefully their defense isn't just god-awful this year. 
Next, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I think this is a pick I haven't made yet, but I actually really like it the more I think about it. Jacksonville Jaguars are going to go with Brian Branch, um, a legitimate defensive playmaker, um, a guy who can really improve that young secondary who, you know, made strides um, this past season. But I think Brian Branch could take that defense to a whole nother level. He can play the run. He can play nickel corner. Um, he can play box safety. He can pretty much do it all. Think of a, you know, best case scenario, Jamal Adams type of guy. I think that's what Brian Branch is. Um, number 25, the New York Giants. Said it once, I've said it again. Um, the Giants want to surround Daniel Jones with weapons. Um, they, you know, committed a lot of money to him and they want to make sure that it succeeds. So they are going to go with um, Jordan Addison, one of the best receivers still on the board. Then at 26, thanks to the Dallas Cowboys, the Seahawks are now picking. I think that they absolutely love this scenario. Um, they get a guy for a better value, for a big position of need. And, you know, they get a guy at a position of need, um, a guy that, you know, I think could be a real difference maker in this league. And that's Michael Meyer, the tight end from Notre Dame. Obviously, you know, they still have no fan and everything, but the Seahawks are a very tight end dominant offense. And so those guys who aren't under contract for long, I might add, um, can be multiple and, and vertically, you know, go down the field and everything, all the things that the Seahawks are wanting to do. Um, at number 27, um, I have the Buffalo Bills taking Broderick Jones, the offensive tackle out of Georgia. Um, they're going to want to protect Josh Allen, and I think that he's one of the best uh, pass-blocking offensive tackles in this draft. Keep Josh Allen upright, give him more time to, you know, literally do everything for the Bills. Um, number 28, I have the Cincinnati Bengals taking B.J. Ojolari, um, the edge from LSU, a guy who I think has really gotten a lot of first-round buzz lately, and for good reason. Um, I really, I looked at his film, and I really like it, so... Um, I had the Bengals taking another op uh, another good pass rusher to pair with, you know, the getting older Trey Hendrickson, right? Um, speaking of exciting pass rushers, number 29, New Orleans. I have them taking Keon White um, out of Georgia Tech, a guy who is a physical freak. I mean, this guy could be one of the best defensive ends in the NFL in a few years. And I think for the Saints, you know, to kickstart their kind of um, rebuilt rebuilding of their team or rebuilding of their core essentially um, you want guys with really high upside you know they did try this with Marcus Marcus Davenport years ago and it didn't work out so well but you know you have, you have Dennis Allen for a reason he's a defensive guy go make him a great edge rusher right um, then rounding out the list number 30 Mozzie Smith for the Eagles that just to me makes a lot of sense he contrasts a lot of what Jordan Davis can do and I think that you know defensive tackle depth is an is a position of need now with Javon Hargraves gone and then I have the Chiefs taking Josh Downs once again. Let me know what you guys think of this mock draft down below. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope that this is accurate. And I want to say, yeah, have a good day, guys.